Good day everyone. So today we're going to learn about PHP forms. Basically in this particular part guys, we're going to learn how to manage form data once the form is submitted. And also we can we're going to learn about how to handle form validation to make our forms much um, secure at the panel. Then of course we are going to learn how to utilize Asabi sticky form. Okay, so those are the things that we're going to talk about today. Okay, so meron tayong ditong sample form. So basically, when it comes to forms, this is created using HTML forms. Okay. Pero once the form submitted, yung nagmamanage po yung ng data is yung backend language, which is one of them, our PHP. So, yun po yung gagamitin natin ito to manage yung mga from data. Now, once we input some data, um, we're expecting a uh, we can might process that one. Let's say, if number yung naka-input, calculate them or we might save the data into the database or the text files or just display them. For now, yung gagawin lang muna natin is just to display them once we submit form, something like this. So, madi-display lang po yung data coming from the form. So, so behind the scene, guys, this is the code ng HTML. Um, this is the form. We have here form inputs or mga input field. Sana kaya na mga value natin. So, just a note guys, in creating a form, you need to make sure that all the inputs ito are in close or nasa loob ng form tag. Opening form tag and the closing form tag. Otherwise, if hindi natin ilalagay sa loob, siya masasubmit as a form. Parang wala lang. Hindi mo mariripin yung mga data niya. So, next is, of course, yung action. Yung attribute dito is important. So, yung action natin dito is meron po siya welcome.php na value. Ito po yung file na pupuntahan once the form is submitted. Okay? You welcome.php. Pero, if ever po, walang laman action, then it will just go to the same file. So, in this case, it is index.php file. So, dyan pa rin siya parang masasubmit yung form. But based on our example, mapupunta siya sa welcome.php. Okay? Okay. So, for the method naman po, need to specify kung ano yung method na gagamitin natin. Actually, there are two methods. There are get post. So later on, I'm going to discuss what the difference between those two. For now, it is um, post method. Dynamic natin. And then, ito naman sa baba, sa loob niya, meron tayong mga text box. We have the input type text, which is the text box na kung saan ito yung browser na part. And then, yung isa naman is yung text. Although merong type na input, but for now, kung gagamitin natin is text lang. And then, sa name, this is important. So, the name attribute has a value full name. So, actually, this, so user define naman po, you can name it whatever you want, as long as it represents the input field. Same thing with the email. Okay? So, kasi yung mga name, name value na yan, is gagamitin po natin yan to reference to the data once the form is submitted. So, yan po yung gagamitin natin para po makuha natin yung mga data na sinigit having the form. So, it is important or take note na ito po yung reference natin. Okay. So, we also have here yung input type submit. So, this is the submit button which is this one. So, it also have the name which is the BTN submit, you can also name it whatever you want. So the purpose of the name, same thing with the text box. 
to reference kung ano yung button na na-click. Okay, kasi there's a possibility. There are a lot of buttons sa isang form. So, how will we recognize those buttons kung alin yung na-click natin? So, yung reference natin is based on their name. Okay? Yun po yung gagamitin natin to check if alin yung button na na-click. Then of course, the value attribute, ito po yung label na nipi-display sa button. Just like this one. Submit and submit. Okay po. Okay, so there are um, two methods, just like I said kanina. For method, which is the get and the post. So if ever we use get method, ito po yung gagamitin nating variable. Or this is one of the super global variable in PHP. Okay? So, built in po to sa PHP. So, para ma-retrieve po natin yung full name, all we need to do is something like this. Dollar sign, underscore, get, capital lahat, and then yung square bracket, then the name of the input. Okay? So, bakit square bracket? It is because this super global variable are arrays. Kaya square bracket po yung pag-retrieve na data coming from that. Okay? If ever naman po post yung ginamit natin, ito naman po yung super global variable na gagamitin natin. The dollar sign underscore post and then to retrieve the name, full name, halos the same yung setup, iba lang po yung variable. Okay? So naka-square bracket din siya, then the name of the input. Okay po? So, those are the two methods that we can use in managing form data. Okay. So, now, we, we try to input some data here. As you can see in the example um, form, naglagay na po tayo ng form data. So, ano ba yung mangyari once we submit the form? Click on that one, it will redirect to the welcome page P. Kasi yun ang nasa action. So, kung makikita sa sample, of course, nag-output, and we're going to check the full. Then, okay, so welcome, then open close, open PHP tag, then close, of course, and then we use echo to display. So, since I use post, dollar sign underscore post yung gagamitin natin, and then square bracket, then here, of course, yung full name based on the name of the input. Same thing with the email, which is the name of the email is email. Okay? Once I do that, then ito po yung naging result na oh. Okay, now let's try to know ano ba yung pagkakaiba ng get at saka post. So, both get and post create an array. Okay? Yung sabi natin, associative array. So, regarding array, we're going to have another video on that. We're going to discuss it more in detail in our future videos. So, this array holds key value pairs where keys are the names of the form control or yung input data. And the values are the input data from the user. Now, both get and post are treated as dollar sign underscore get and dollar sign underscore post. These are super globals, which means they are always accessible regardless of scope. And you can access them from any function, class, or file without having to do anything special. So the get underscore, or I mean the dollar sign underscore get, is an array of variables passed to the current script via URL parameters, while post is an array of variables passed to the current script via HTTP method. So, kailan ba natin gagamitin yung get? Information sent from a form with a get method is visible to everyone. Okay, sa it is visible to everyone. All variable names and values are displayed in the URL. So something, something like this. 
system form, if we use get, makikita po dito yung name ng input, yung value, yung another name of the input, then yung value. Yun po yung get method. So be careful in using the get method. So get also has limits on the amount of information to send. The limitation is about 2,000 characters. However, because the variable are displayed in the URL, it is possible to bookmark the page. This can be useful in some cases, of course. Um, and then, of course, get a be used for sending non-sensitive data. Take note po, it can be or it may be used for sending non-sensitive data. So note po natin is get should never be used sending passwords for other sensitive information. Okay? Let's say, for example, you are creating a registration form. Then you submit the form. Since the data is sent via URL, yung password natin malalagay po sa URL. Since it is possible to bookmark, pwede siyang mabalikan and malaman yung mga sensitive information na in-input natin. So that is not good. So if there are sensitive data, of course, hindi po get yung gagawin. Instead, yung post. But, so when to use post naman po? The information sent from a form with post method is invisible. Okay, invisible sa others. Okay, so all names, values are embedded within the body of the HTTP request and has no limits of the amount of information to send. Moreover, O supports advanced functionality such as support for multi-part binary input while uploading files to serve. Okay, so yung file upload, it supports using the post method. Then, however, because of the variables are not displayed in the URL, it is not possible to book. It's okay lang naman, long as mas secure siya. Okay. Now, let's try to talk about form validation. First, if you're creating the form, you need to validate them. Like, for example, kailangan required yung data na masasubmit if ever hindi sila mag-input ng data. Kailangan yung mga characters nila. If they're creating a password, kailangan at least six. Na ganun. So, those are the things that we're going to talk about in terms of form validation. Okay? So, to protect data from hackers and spammers, a secure validation must be done. You should validate every user input before processing. So, these are the things to consider in validating from data. First, of course, we need to validate request method. Yung bang, ano ba yung ginamit na method? Post or get? Okay? So, kung post, ito yung i-handle ko. Kung get, ito naman yung ima manage ko. Ganun. To prevent cross-site scripting accesses attacks. Okay? So, these are parang client-side attacks na kung saan naglalagay ng mga JavaScript code sa mga input field and might prevent yung web application. Later on, I'm going to discuss it more on details. Then, remove unnecessary white spaces like after and uh, before and after the text. Mayroong mga white spaces that include Remove those unnecessary white spaces. Validate required input fields. Of course, kinakailangan natin i-validate yan kung required ba yung um, text box. Pwede rin natin i-check kung ang isang input field i-require ba natin for it should only contain numbers, letters, and white spaces. We can also check if it is or should check if it is valid email lalo na kung i-email tayo ng i we can also check the, let's say we have a password, we can check the number of Tama ba yung number of characters niya? At least six pa. We should also check if we have passwords or having strong password. And then if we are requiring also a website, a URL, we also have means to validate the URL if it is a valid URL. Okay? Now let's try to know how to validate the request method. 
So it is a good practice to validate the request method if you are using Postman. You can add the following code in the handler. To type yung sample code natin, we have a, an if statement here. First, then using the serve dollar sign underscore server. This is also one of the super global variable HP. And then the key is request method. And then equal to post. We need to make sure that this syntax is correct. It is all, always capital lahat. Okay. Check natin. If ever post yung submit na form, post method yung ginamit, then I can process here yung request. Oh. Next is prevent cross-site script attacks, the XSS. Basically, cross-site scripting or XSS is a type of computer security vulnerability typically found in the web application. XSS attacks um, basically enables attackers to inject client-side scripts in web pages viewed by other users. So let's say we have this sample form. Itong form, wala pa po siyang validation. Once I submit or input some script, yung mangyayari po, if wala pa po ang validation for preventing XSS attacks, it will display this one. So yung script doon is nag as regular script. So what if, let's just imagine, what if hindi lang po alert message yung nilagay doon? What if yung script na nilagay doon is not just an alert message? What if it is about to delete your files, delete database, or even ruin your system entirely? So that's a big problem. Okay? So we need to prevent that one. To that, we have this particular functions in PHP that can convert special characters to HTML entity. That way, hindi na siya mag a function as normal JavaScript code. So, for example, dito, ito yung code natin. Once it's converted, ganito na yung mangyayari. Yung mga less than, greater than, it will be converted in HTML entity. So to do that, can it lang po, if let's say this is the string or let's say the post, we just need to pass the value for the string to the um, HTML special cars function, the parameter, okay? For example, in this form, we have, so nilagyan natin ng special cars na yung mga input. So once the form is submitted, let's say nag-input tayo ng data, lagyan natin ng script, and once we click yung submit button, hindi na po siya nag-pop up. Instead, na-display na lang po siya as a normal text. Okay? We're going to check yung view page source. Ito po yung nangyari. Yung mga less than, uh, quotation and greater than ang na-convert po siya into HTML entities. That way, hindi na po siya ma parang ma mapaprocess as JavaScript po. Okay po. Next is remove unnecessary white spaces. So the trim function will strip white spaces or other characters from the beginning and end of the stream. So for example, this one, we have a text here na merong mga white spaces dito. So, para ma-remove yan, all we need to do is to use the trim function. Once we do that, well, mawawala po yung mga are removing those unnecessary white spaces using the trim function. Okay? So in our code, ganito lang po yung ginawa natin. We try to course, pass here the name, and then process na po. Okay, next is validate required input fields. So in PHP, we use the empty function to check whether an input is empty or not. So this function returns true on the following cases. 
So, empty string. So, i-consider yan na empty. Zero. Empty din yan. 0.0. Empty din yan. Zero na naka-quote or string. Five. Zero. Yan. Null value. Null. Um, empty. Remember yan. False. Consider also as empty. And of course, the empty array. Once you have this uh, value on your variable, then your variable will be considered as string. Oh, I mean as empty. So for example, this is how we use it. If statement, then check natin. Empty ba yung post na full name? Walang laman. Full name, then we submit the form. Then we can set the error message. Let's try to have this one. Without validation, this is the form. Once we submit the form, pag we display la pa rin po yung text na welcome. Pero wala pong lakan. What if you are doing calculation? So possible, magkaroon ng error. So wala siyang makakalculate. Okay? So we need to make sure, if it is a required field, we need to make sure na meron pong validation. We're checking the so to do that, all we need to do basically having our current file here is something like this. First, yung ginawa ko is gumawa ko ng variable na has error. By default, it is false. So if ever magkaroon ng error, then gagawin ko siyang true. Then first is I tried to check empty ba full name? Once the form is submitted, if empty, I'm going to set the has error mess has error variable to true. Okay, and then maglalagay ako ng error message that may still is required. Otherwise, kung may laman naman, then ipapasa ko yung value validating its um, value using the HTML special course in trim. I'm going to pass it to the name variable. Okay, para ito na yung gagamitin ko sa pag-display later on. And then same thing with the email. Check natin kung empty. Empty siya, set um, yung has error to true, and then set some error message. If ever wala namang error, um, may laman siya, then we're going to do this one. Okay? Now, if ever okay po yung validation natin, wala pong error, dito naman tayo. Check check natin. Has error. If has error variable is still equal to false, therefore, okay po yung lahat ng data. May laman po yung mga field. Then that's the only time that I'm going to display. Okay? Checking at the bottom part naman sa the code, makita natin dito yung name error message. Dito natin nalagay kasi once the form is submitted, and tayo naglagay ng data, lalabas po dito yung error message. So, chine-check po muna natin. If S set yung name error message, that's the only time na we are going to display yung message. So, ano yung purpose ng S set? This is a function in PHP that will check if a variable is already defined, or declared, or has already a value. If it did, then that's the only time I'm going to echo yung error message. Okay. Same thing dito sa email. So, now let's try to manipulate the form. We try to submit the form, ito po yung nangyari. Without having any data, nag-display po yung error message natin. Pagandahin yan, lagyan ng red colors. Then it's up to you na lang po. Uh, you can manipulate that one using this. So, okay. Now let's try to talk about the should only contain letters, numbers, and white spaces. So there are a variety of functions that we can utilize in PHP uh, in managing other validations. For this one, we have what we call print much functions which is searching thing for pattern, um, which it returns true if the pattern is six, otherwise returns false. Using this function, 
you can check if a particular string contains letters, numbers, and white spaces. So ito be yung setup. This is the sample code. Ring match, then ito yung pattern to check kung letters, numbers, and white spaces kung meron na siya. And then the name. So this basically return true if the name um, parang nagmamatch ba siya sa pattern. Na exist ba siya based on the pattern. If did, it will return true. So ever naman po hindi siya match kung meron tayong dito not operator. Parang sasabihin if not match set error message. If match Huwag ka tayong mag-set ng error message kasi match siya. Therefore, okay po siya. Pero if not match, then let's set some error message. Ganun po yung bakit, kung bakit ginamitan natin siya ng not operator. So, then, paano naman kung sa valid email, there are emails that we are requiring from the user. So, there are also a function that we can utilize. So, PHP built-in function filter var can be used for many purposes. So since we are about to validate an email, we have to set the second parameter called as flag to filter validate. To do that, same thing. Filter var, first parameter will be the email, okay, yung value that we are trying to compare, and then flag that we are going to use, which is we are about to validate the email. So same setup, if not much or if not valid, sabi natin, if not valid email, set some error. Ah, may note this one, meron tayong not operator dito. If not valid email, then set the error. If it is, then wag tayong mag-send. Therefore, valid email. So, then we also have um, checking the number of length actually, characters. So in this part, we also have the function strlen function in which this will returns the length of the string. So as simple as this, if you have a password, we're just going to pass the password here to get the number of characters. So if ever your password niya na in input is less than 6, mababa pa sa 6. Therefore, we're going to set an error at least six so it's up to you maybe at least eight or nine or ten just a sample lang so that's one of the function of pwede natin magamit for um counting length ng isang string okay so should be a valid url same thing with valid email same pa rin po yung gagamitin natin function which is the filter bar Instead of the validate email yung flag, we're going to use the filter validate URL. And then, same process pa rin po. We're going to pass the first parameter of the function as the website or the URL. And then, yung flag, which is the filter validate URL. And then, if not valid, set some error message. So, so yun po. So basically, those are the validation functions. Mga functions that we can utilize to validate the form. Okay? Okay, ngayon naman, pag-usapan natin, ano ba yung sinasabing form sticky or yung sticky forms? The sticky input are auto-filling input after submitting. If user forgot to fill the email, an error message was shown. Also, all other inputs were cleared. So, sticky inputs prevent this annoying mistake. To this, the form and handler should be on the same script. So, we need to echo the submitted name and email as the value attribute of the inputs. So, we have here yung sample. This is a form without having a sticky form. Implementation. So, if we try to submit the form, basically, it will validate. Now, maglalagay ako ng data. Kaya natin yung kita to. So, we're expecting na once may data na siya and we submit the form, mawawala na, of course. 
error message. Pero, ito nga aside from that, nawawala siya, nawawala rin po yung value. Just imagine po guys, what if hindi lang po dalawa yung text, um, text box natin? Let's say there are 10 or mas marami pa. And nagkamakal, nagkamali ka lang sa isa. Okay? What do you think will happen? It will wipe out all the data and basically, you're going to redo your work. magi input ka naman. Na naman ulit. Which is totally annoying talaga. So to do that, do na yung papasok yung sinasabi natin, sticky form. Okay? So, madali lang po um, paano po gawin yung sticky form. Since on our validation code, we have the reference on the value of the form. Once Walang error siya. Which is, in this case, we have the name. But if ever walang error, mapupunta yung value sa name variable. And then, for the email, mapupunta naman sa email. So, these are the value that we need para iset natin doon sa mga input as their value attribute. So, mayayari, once may, mayroon na po mga data doon, display po dito sa form yung mga value. Okay? So, let's check sa baba. So, ito na po yung nangyari with sticky form. Okay, short. We have here yung value attribute. First, we need to check first. Nakaset na ba yung name? Or na-declare na ba? Or may value na ba? If meron, then echo the name. Same thing with the email. So, dito rin sa value attribute niya. Check din natin. Nakaset ba? Na-declared? Value na ba? Then echo. Okay? So, yun po. That's how we can implement yung sinasabing sticky form. So, let's try to check this one. We have this form. Nakasubmit natin yung form. Without any value. So, mayayari. It will just display yung error message. Once that happen, naglagay ako ng text dito. Um, and then, I will try to submit once again. So, hindi na po nawawala yung data. Okay? So, that is what we call sticky form. Kahit marami pa dyan, yung mga text box, yung nagkamali po tayo ng isa, mariretain po yung mga value niya. It's going to manage kung alin man yung nag-error. Okay? Oh. Then, lagyan po natin ang data. Wait. Hit. Ayan. Sabi na po. So, dito naman, supposedly, nawawala to if we're going to redirect the page. But since wala pa tayo sa part na we're going to redirect kasi nag-display pa lang tayo, of course, we have a parang solution for that. Kahit pa paano, once mag-display na yung result, we are about to delete yung mga data dito para hindi naman maging redundant yung So that, madali lang po. On our success um, part of our code, we just need to set the name at email variable to empty. So, wala pong laman. Para kung wala na siyang laman, then wala siyang i-echo or i-display na result. Once we do that, and we submit this once again, yan, nawala na po yung mga text dito. But of course, na-display po yung data natin. Us. Okay, so that's how we can manage your work. Guys, so I hope you learned something new today regarding our topic, which is basically focused in form handling, managing form data, form validation, and also you can talk about sticky form. Okay, so I think that's it. So, just like I always say, guys, just keep practicing, never stop learning. Thank you for watching, guys. Goodbye for now.